Called Be the Change, inspired by the words of Mahatma Gandhi, who lived for peace and not violence, and told us to be the change we wish to see in the world. Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio with Tom and Ramon, and Happy New Year's to all of our listeners out there, and to everybody who is not listening, too. Happy New Year's, guys. Um, wow, what, yeah, what a year, Ramon. Um, well, it's not over for us yet, even though New Year's Eve is for me today, but by the time you listen to this, it will be a different year. Yeah, we, yeah. Are, we are recording this on the 30th, so, uh, but this is our, this is uh, becoming, uh, this show is becoming a bit of a, uh, what do we call it, Doug, for a uh, hundredth monkey tradition? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, it's. It's amazing. So, for those of you who've been listening for more than uh, three years, um, you know who we have coming up. But before we bring that special person, and uh, I have some news here that I found quite amazing. Uh, Number one, the first one, I'll save the one I like the most for last. Let me get this out of the sun. Okay. Is city living making animals more intelligent? Um, according to, uh, I'm trying to remember according to who, but according to this news article I found, um, these these uh, animals are becoming smarter. So if you have a cat or you've been trying to catch that mouse in your house, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, example in my own life, I've seen the. Um, the crows here in Japan, because there's not so many pigeons, but there's so many crows. And people here, they put a, a net over the garbage so the crows can't get to it. Well, these crows would, like, you know, grab the garbage net and then jump up or fly up a little bit and, and push it behind it and then just, you know, have a free feast. Mm. Um, you know, crows are one of the smartest birds out there. Yeah, and they're also very uh, known to be very vengeful if you mess with them. They won't forget your face. Um, But if you have any small animals, you'll see what I'm talking about uh, as far as um, these animals getting smarter. And supposedly they've gotten, I think in the last 100 years, it's been 7% uh, smarter. So what do you think, Tom? Do you well, see that? No, I don't know if that's just the uh, just the animal kingdom or if it's all of life that's getting seven percent smarter, Ramon. Yeah, finally, I, I think found because it. I think it's happening across the board on the planet. Yeah, but I, that, I, that's, I, that'll be a good one to talk to our guests about tonight too. Yeah. Uh, so, a U.S. biologist has found human behavior could be driving the evolution of animals' brains by changing the habitats in which they live. The researchers suggest the brains of some animals have not uh, have got bigger in tandem with the in- industrialization of their habitat, making some city animals smarter than their rural peers. So I'll leave that, and you guys can click on it. Um, so the next one is... Um, this is another exciting one. This one might be the, one of the biggest news of the year, and I don't know if you guys heard of this. Uh, mutant mice live longer. Systematically blocking their uh, mechanistic target of rapamycin, or MTOR protein, with an immune-suppressant drug has been shown to increase longevity in mice. 
And I'll leave it there. So what do you think about that one, Tom? So uh, what we're, we're com- coming up with the uh, live longer pill? Yeah. So basically, like these mice um, that are 22, like uh, 22 months old, ver- they'll see that they'll regenerate back to like a mouse that's like six months old, kind of a physical body, like their hearts and lungs and stuff like that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I, I'd be really curious to see what other kind of side effects come off from this chemical soup that they're pumping into these mice. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. that. We'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah, you're going to live longer, but you're now going to have four arms growing out of your back. It might be useful. Okay. Now, the most exciting one for me is, finally, we have a solution to building your own very, uh, your, your very own free energy system at home. This is the first one for now. I've come across for 3D printing your very own free energy solution. So basically they have a recipe here. If you can get your hands on a 3D printer, you can print uh, everything you need. And um, Tom, you you looked at this. Yeah, this is this thing runs on is basically drawing uh, static electricity out of the out of the atmosphere. And, you know, it looks pretty dynamic to me. I mean, it's it's. It's a basic principle. You know, you have a ground and an antenna, and the antenna is onto the positive pole of the motor. And this this actually, um, the way this guy developed, designed this motor, it looks pretty damn intriguing to me. I think, I mean, I'm just looking at it, and then I'm thinking scale, and I'm thinking antenna. What was that? What would that uh, an antenna look like that would be big enough to, say, power a house? Uh, so... Uh, this one here has, and, and this guy has been, is, is absolutely amazing. He's, he's open sourced all of this. He put his whole, his whole, the, the whole thing up on the internet. Uh, I mean, you can, you can download the program, the printing program he used for printing it, all the schematics, everything about this thing is there. So, uh, guys, if you've got a 3D printer out there and are willing to take on this little project, I would be really curious to have one of our listeners who has that kind of a resource uh, put this thing together and see if it actually works. See, I mean, because if it does, if it does, uh, that that's that's one that's going to get my gears going inside my mind and looking at how can I scale this up, how can I bake this this uh, big enough and and uh, durable enough to power uh, just a home. I mean, if I could come up with that, that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if this size. How much would you be able to get out of this size? Oh, that size. Oh, you could probably charge your cell phone or something like that. I mean, that's not going to be. That's not going to put out that much power. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that means that would have to be what, like uh, maybe three feet by five feet. I don't know, Ramon. Uh, that would come into the electrical engineering into things on on scaling and. And, uh, you know, all those, uh, that's all Greek to me. So, um, I can see okay. the parts and I can see, I can see how it basically works. But as far as figuring out the mouth, math and, and, uh, all that now, <laughs> that's why we have other people who, uh, know that stuff out there because we do work together. Well, we have somebody with us that has been with us for the last, um, Two years, and this will be the third year. Um, absolutely, and- absolutely. We have Anelia Benz back with us for our New Year's show. Uh, yeah. If you guys, you guys aren't familiar with Anelia, I'm going to give you a short bio on her, and then we'll get into our into chatting. Uh, this is Anelia's first incarnation on any planet. So she was born free from self-importance, attachments, personal agendas, personal evolution, or a desire for soul advancement. She arrived knowing that the planet needed to vibrate at a higher level in order to undergo a global ascension. What she did not know was how to assist in raising that vibration and how to communicate the need for a higher vibration to others. Initially, Anelia tried emulating other people's actions by getting married, having children, having problems, and learning about human suffering. 
Although this gave her a deeper understanding of what others considered important, it did not assist in reaching the aim of global ascension. In her early 20s, she realized the key lay in human communication. She enrolled at Dublin City University in communication studies and graduated with a first-class honors degree. She then per perfected her grasp of communication by observing and studying organizational communication, human, human psychological and manipulation, the cult mindset, and the influence of social media. In January 2010, she received a request from Source to go public as a person in order to promote the message of empowerment and sovereignty to the masses. Emerging from anonymity, she became a messenger of personal and global ascension. Over the next three years, she worked tirelessly to explore, investigate, develop, and disseminate tools, including meditations and exercises that were quick, mystery-free, and highly effective. Tools used by hundreds of thousands of people to achieve personal ascension, and in doing so, to contribute to the goal of global ascension. We want to welcome you, Anelia, back to the 100th Monkey Radio. Hi, thank you for having me back. I know it's a fabulous tradition. I know when the year's ended, when you guys call me for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you don't have to have a calendar. You just wait for Tom and Ramon. Exactly. Oh, yeah. we're getting close to New Year's. Oh my gosh, it's December already. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word, Anelia. This has been quite a year. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm I'm curious curious to to know I know I've been kind of following you myself but uh would you share with uh, our listeners what you've been up to in the last year? Well, it's been quite an interesting year because um I started working with a couple of collaborators and we started an academy for women for training women to be leaders in their own lives and on society and that's called Awaken Academy. And um, and then I also did a couple of experiments this year. One of them was an experiment in consciousness. I think I did that in July. And it was basically asking people uh, to to have the intent to be joy like love for 21 days straight, right? And several hundred people joined. And a lot of them also made movies about each day because that was part of the deal. Um, although, you know, part of the deal of, uh, if you wanted really to, to be co the part of the core team type thing, you know, holding that energy for 21 days. Uh, other people did it without making videos and you can still actually do it at any moment. So we did that experiment in consciousness and it was amazing. <laughs> it was really, truly amazing the changes that people went through. And, you know, you can watch it. I mean, it's like a, like one of these TV, um, reality TV things. You can go in there and, um, experiment, uh, in consciousness.net, I think we had it in. And, um, yeah, it was really, really fascinating. And of course, you know, it's like all these other things that have been happening energetically speaking this year has, it's been really amazing. Even for me personally, the way that I have been learning to deliver the message of empowerment has been changing and shifting and moving and it's always becoming simpler, always becoming less um, mystical as it were and coming up to 2014 I'm very excited because it's, I've received very strongly the guidance that not just myself but anybody who has been doing their work and has been have been raising their vibration and has a you know level of awareness that you can see things beyond just the TV and your nine to five job and the beer and the girlfriend or the boyfriend or whatever to step it up for 2014 really really put your you know get put your game on or something I can't remember the thing put your game on there you go yeah yeah <laughs> and um, and go um, really find ways to make it less. Uh, new agey so that we can reach the masses. I think 2014 is going to be the year of reaching the masses because one of the things that really fascinates me about 2013 and it's completely unexpected, I had not seen this um, and looking back now I can see how it happened gradually and it's happening gradually, is that even the most asleep person has raised their awareness level even a tiny bit that from before, right? But it's still that much more aware than before. And also that every single being on this planet is becoming more empowered. What does that mean? More powerful, right? right. So that power, either we use it ourselves consciously or allow other people to manipulate us. And, you know, if we fall into fear, it's really, really powerful. 
So it's really important for all of us to reach those masses and let them know, look, you know, you're like a like a baby with a shotgun here. <laughs> like, mm. Be aware that you are powerful. Be aware of how you use that power. Because whether you use it consciously or unconsciously, you do have it and you are using it. And I think that people are ready. Even if, I don't know what language we can use, you know, I don't know how we can put this out to the masses, but I think that's 2014 for all of us who are in this media of, or this role of empowering others and delivering a message, yeah? You guys obviously do. And I have been doing that the past three years as well. So... This is this is something that I think we need to do for 2014. Uh, but yeah, as you said, 2013 has been really interesting leaps and bounds. I can tell you. <laughs> I seem to notice through the, through this last year. I noticed there were were um, it, energetically. It seemed like there were certain times where certain things were coming up for a lot of different peoples. That had a lot of real similar aspects to it. Like uh, uh, early in the year, it was it seemed like uh, shadow work. It was like really diving deep into into the self to dig out and and stir up all those things that have been buried and hidden for all of our lives. You know, uh, it seemed like that was that was the trend early in the year, and then it then it, it seemed to evolve into into um uh, and you mentioned this before that power thing understanding and, and acknowledging the our own power and how we are transmitting that into the world how we are projecting that into the world uh you know i i don't know i don't did you happen to notice any any trends along those same sorts of lines yourself yeah absolutely i can totally relate to that as well um the the shift that i saw happening when i would when I would write out my newsletters or uh, put them out on Facebook or Twitter, I would find that many, many people, I would say thousands of people would relate and say, that's exactly what I'm seeing, and not just with myself, but with my friends. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ramon? Are you talking to a muted mic? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I know you so well. So, Emilia, you know, with that, um, I, I want to jump right into that that article that with the animals um, getting smarter. But like Tom said, it's not only the animals because we can see this in the kids. You know, them understanding technology at such a high rate. Yeah, I remember my niece when she was uh, a years one year old, and if I didn't witness, I I wouldn't believe it. She knew how to change the uh, picture on my, uh, um, you know, the the um, what's that called, the the screensaver picture, <laughs> the, the background picture. She knew how to change it, and I saw her change it consistently. And she will always change it. And she was only one, you know, like still holding on to things when she was walking. But she would climb up to the desk and then change the the picture. So. <laughs> So I guess, Anelia, the question is, do you think that this uh, uh, this raising of the vibration of the planet is uh, not, or, or do you think that it's not just humans that are are uh, ascending, for lack of a better term here, are growing at a rapid rate in all of the planet Earth? I think it's the entire planet and every being on that planet, including what we might think of as, um, entities that are not sentient, yeah. Like uh, this is uh, this might be a stretch for some people, but I will explain a little bit uh, afterwards. Even your house, right? <laughs> Even though your house is made from materials that one would think are not natural, like plastic and metals and wood that you know it's been chopped down and other things, chemicals, and even those houses, they have a consciousness, even plastic has a consciousness, and you can tap into it. And I think that one of the things that we hear a lot from many, many cultures, many, many religious teachings, although it has been suppressed for thousands of years, 
and turned around and tried to, you know, cover it up, is the fact that human beings are gods, right? That they are the creator. A human being, every single human being is the creator. And what does that mean? They create and they infuse with life. And it's part of when we raise our vibration, when we become empowered, we immediately empower those around us. And many individuals have had visions or remembrances of a time on earth when, and you can talk to any shaman actually and have this right now today, not in the past, when they would talk to trees and animals, like really, really communicate, not necessarily talk, but communicate in a full experiential way where the person becomes the other and has the other's experience and it's been it's starting up again you know that's that's actually happening again so it's in in our past future because obviously once we become aware enough then we won't need the linear time experience because we won't need to have experience in bite-sized pieces anymore right at the moment, we're totally long, uh, and often we will be able to see past and future. Many people can relate to this. You know, they think about something and it happens, or they they he- think about somebody and they call them, or they hear their name, or they think about a, a song in the morning and it's playing in the afternoon. And this has been happening more and more in the past few decades. So our environment which is every other animal, every other person, and all the things, or objects around us, is it's us. We are it, and it is us. And therefore, the more aware we become, the more aware our environment becomes and reflects back to us, those knowings and those um, creations, yeah? Right. So I totally yeah. agree. I think it's the entire planet. I, You know, what I've been experiencing myself and and I've heard other people talk about it is especially with your pets and animals and stuff like that and you know with my cat the other day I was thinking oh you shouldn't you know I just thought this I didn't say it I was thinking like oh it's such a nice day you should go out and and you know really enjoy the nice day because later it's gonna get colder when the sun goes down and I was thinking this in my head and then she woke up and then she walked over to the door and waited for me to open it. Like, <laughs> That's exactly it. That's it. <laughs> it was, was that a coincidence or did she no, really like? <laughs> no, not very incident. <laughs> and and also on the more intentional end of things here, uh, I actually myself and I've heard that and I've seen others that are experiencing similar things is I seem to have been able to uh, peel back a couple more layers of the onion or the veil as far as being able to communicate with higher self and uh, guides and such as far as being able to understand what's being talked about, what we're, you know, being able to understand a dialogue uh, is becoming clearer, I guess, is the best way to term it. Uh, mm. You know, there's not a very, very good words for the way that communication happens. But um, for me personally, that communication is becoming clearer. And I noticed this about, oh, halfway through last year when things seemed to really start kicking up, kicking it up a notch and me being able to tap into things a lot easier. Uh, So, you know, that uh, so I, I definitely I definitely think that. Uh, you're right on spot with the whole planet being um, uh, raising its vibration as we're raising our vibration. I think that fit. Uh, that just sounds right. <laughs> well, it, it kind of reminds me of that whole thing, you know, that whole say, that saying, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So it's it's only it's only natural, I think, that if you're around a certain environment to a certain degree it it affects you so if you're raising your vibration then of course your environment you know would raise its vibration so before it it was like a strong belief like oh you know for example if a child grows up in a bad neighborhood he most likely would grow up to be blah 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 but now it's the other way around where it's like you know we're growing spiritually 
and then our environment around us is reacting to that. I missed some of that. I think I've got cut off or something. Mm. Oh, I, I was just saying that, you know, how the the old paradigm thinking is, you know, if someone grows up in a bad neighborhood, then they are most likely going to turn out to be A, B, or C. Mm-hmm. But I think now is that, you know, many of us are growing spiritually that we're affecting the environment, so we're kind of pulling it up with us. Yeah, so that, that's only natural. I think that's really important. And again, it's not something new. There's been studies done by um, decades ago, again, decades ago, and I think it was the 70s when those people who do transcendental meditations would send teams into troubled cities and would just there, sit there meditating day after day and they would, they would watch the crime um, statistics go down dramatically. Right. And the same with Tibetan monks, you know, they would set up a, a, a small temple somewhere or just go and pray for so many weeks or months. And the, again, the crime would dramatically drop. So, yeah, it definitely affects. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I've also heard like, um, sorry, Tom, where um, I'm trying to get this correctly, where I think they did some experiment in Russia where they use um, pyramids. They made like these, you know, because Russia is experimenting with pyramids. And then they would take the rocks and the cement that they left inside the pyramid, make the prison with this, and that prison would be so much more calmer than <laughs> the average Russian pr- prison. I've heard that they've been doing a lot of experiments with pyramids. I haven't actually researched it, but it does fascinate me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. that's very very cool technology. And Tom, you were going to say? Uh, well, no, I I don't know what I was going to say. Now it it was there and then it's gone. <laughs> it's been really important. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really really important. Uh, no, I want to. I I just want to uh, pick on a few things that happened in the last year and uh, get your impression and and the what you see as the the overall ramifications and impact that these events had. And probably one of the biggest ones that, that sticks in my mind was the the whistleblower thing with Edward, Edward Snowden exposing the wiretapping and all that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm curious, Anilia, to get your impression on that whole fiasco and what, what that's going to mean down the road for the society in, as a whole. One of the um, those cycles that we were talking about that happened, and it, it, was, it keeps coming back. This cycle keeps coming back in waves. Is the the awareness level? There's so much light now that things can't be hidden anymore, and integrity comes in big time. The level of integrity of individuals dictates what happens to us as a society, as a species if we're living truthfully and if we don't put our own lives in front of the collective good, as it were, um, then that really comes through, right? Because all these things in the past were able to be hidden because individuals were afraid that they, if they spoke, they would be killed or they would be imprisoned or whatever, right? Or they would lose their jobs. <laughs> Different levels of fear there. And... Now we're getting more and more individuals who are readily a- and able to step up and say, you know what, I don't care. I'm going to show this. I'm going to tell the truth. And here it is. I'm going to show the world. This is happening more and more, not just in government circles, but in private companies, even in families and religions. People are coming forward saying, this happened. Or this is happening. They're no longer afraid, no matter what the consequences. And when people start putting their own survival or, or that fear of of their own survival in front of everything else, they cannot be ruled. They cannot be controlled. The society, the species, the human population cannot be controlled if they're no longer working from a level of fear. And more, as more and more people show that example in everyday life, more and more people will feel, will follow their steps, yeah? And I can relate, the first year that I came out as a public person in 2010, 
I was attacked left, right and centre, even I was death threats and everything. Did I stop? No, I didn't. Yeah, because it's like, I don't agree with that, first of all. And secondly, the, t- the moment I start defending is the moment that I fall. Because it's not about my survival at all. It's about the empowerment of every human being on the planet. I mean, what's more important? Come on. <laughs> you know? And the people saw it. You know, many, many people saw it. And they had then the strength and the um, encouragement and inspiration to come out themselves. And many people have written to me saying, if, you know, if you hadn't stepped up, this is, I wouldn't have. Now I have the courage. I can do it because I know that you did. Why, why me? Because... I'm five foot tall, I'm a girl, you know, if I can do it, then, Jesus, you know, anybody can do it. So, yeah, and it's like that. That example is followed through. So these people who who have come out, the whistleblowers, it's really important. And I would encourage if anybody is sitting on with information or sitting on the fence with something that they know is going on on the planet that is affecting thousands, if not millions of people, just do it. Come out and say it. Just do it. Because the alternative would be for you to stay silent and forever live with that weight of having stayed silent. And we can't live in that space anymore because of the vibration we're moving into. If you break your own integrity and your own truthfulness, you can't survive. It's going to destroy you from the inside out. It does, too. That sort of thing will create all sort of dis-ease. Yeah, I like the the space between this and east. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. the the message that he brought out, the whole wiretapping thing, uh what kind of what kind of impact do you think that had on the population? From the perspective of the masses, the sleeping masses, I think a little bit of a question mark with regards to the integrity of their own government. Yeah. Mm. And and also, I think for anybody who's aware and awake, the illusion that there is any any privacy at all, or or maybe the the value we place on our own privacy really had to be looked at. Because there is it does not exist. It does not exist with regards to um recordings and the, the the active listening of humans onto others. But it honestly does not exist at a collective level. All of us are, have the capacity to step into the memories of anybody else on the planet. And the only reason we don't do it is because we're well-mannered and we have been told we can't. Hmm. But real privacy is an illusion. It does not exist. Yeah. But the the will like the the agreement to be wired and whatever, like the, the recordings happening and stuff. If you don't agree with it, something will happen. I, I have an experience when I was a teenager. I think I was, I don't know, fourteen, fifteen, something like that. And our house was, you know, tapped, our telephone was tapped. And um for reasons that you know, it's too long to go into right now. But I remember we all knew it in the house. We all knew that they were listening in. And I picked up the phone one day and I could hear the guys on the other side having a conversation about their coffee or something. These two guys, right? And I said, um, so I listened to them for a little while and I said, uh, guys, you forgot to switch off the mute button while you're recording our conversations. I need to make a phone call. Can you please switch it on? And it was like, they went really quiet. And then it there was a click, and you could hear a doo you know. The, 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 the stuff, right? Wow. It's like, it's, it's like that. If you're in full integrity and you're not hiding anything, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, yeah? It doesn't matter who's listening or watching you because you are in full integrity. Uh, where, But also there's that level of trust, of um, n- trusting your own government, trusting your own authorities or whatever, the people we've placed in power, the power over us to do stuff to us, to do the right thing, which were they not. So, <laughs> right. yeah, it's a multi-level thing, really, if you think about it. Right. Yeah, you know, and I've watched I've watched uh, our 
as a collective, I've watched our empathic abilities become to really be switched on. Uh, you know, even for those who are, you know, quote unquote, uh, not awake, yeah. uh, or whatever we want to term that. Um, but uh, I've even noticed within them that the level of perception that that they have, you know, when they're when they're drawing on that empathic ability, uh, is becoming, you know, they're becoming more accurate and a more. I'm seeing it happen in others more than I used to. Is what I'm mm-hmm. trying to say. And even within those in the um, the woo woo community who are actually working on self, working on trying to you know grow and become a become trying to become, uh, I've seen the, those empathic abilities just go just go through the roof in the last yes. year since we we started this show. And, Absolutely. Uh, and I've always, I've always felt, and, and I said this in the fir- during the first year that this was, this would be, if all of our empathic abilities were just click switched on for everybody on the planet, where they were full blown, everybody, uh, you know, you, you could not lie. Game that that's game set and match right there. Yeah, yeah. And so. So you know, Ramon, you brought up that story about the mo- the mice the, getting some kind of a drug to make them live longer. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm looking for uh, how about we find that drug? They find that drug that kicks on our empathic abilities. I'm sure somebody's working on that. Hmm? <laughs> I guarantee you. Um, but I was going to say something about the whole fear and how. I kind of feel people are getting tired of the, you know, especially with the fear porn. I hear a lot of regular people just say, oh, my God, do we have to watch this again? (laughs) Yeah. You know, like, you know how they would take the news, and I don't know what's the latest one in America right now, where they just, like, beat it to death. And it gets to the point where, and and I, I think they do that on purpose to, to kind of, um, make you uh what's the word um not empathic the opposite uh a- a- apathetic yeah i think that's the aim of it to just make you um unable to respond to any human emotions right right to, to stop our empathy to stop our form of communication with every single human being on the planet is empathic some more than others but if this is an experiment that anybody listening can do, find a video of people laughing. They, they laughing for about, I don't know, two and a half minutes. Min, uh, around second 15, you will be smiling. It doesn't matter what emotion you were feeling before you started watching this video or any video of people laughing. 15 seconds, you will be smiling. By, by 30 seconds, you're going to be giggling. And probably by the minute, you're going to be laughing out loud. That's empathy. Hmm. Our human bodies are wired to be empathic to other human beings and to other beings that are not human too, like uh, they're animals. We are empathic. We're highly empathic. And that's exactly, you're right, that's exactly what they've been trying to switch off for decades now. Hmm. Yeah, and, you know, I think the the game's got kicked up a few more notches on on the uh, on that end of things too. Uh, I I don't have I don't watch regular media you know the the television stations and such I, I don't watch that stuff or the commercials uh, but during these holiday seasons I happen to be at 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 uh, a relative's house for Christmas and they had the TV on there and I sat down and started watching and the first commercial that came on uh, I don't even remember what it was but uh, it was so blatant that the the programming within it uh was so blatant and i don't even remember what the heck it was and and what they were saying i mean it's just it was just in your face it was one of those things you know you see all these youtube videos where these guys are pointing out the mind control programming and stuff in these videos and stuff and the very first commercial i saw it was just like in your face tom there it is (laughs) Yeah. So and and so, and I've also heard from others that it seems like the the media the media the industry there whatever we want to call it 
is really, really trying to kick up the game in a couple of notches because we are uh, slipping through their fingers. Uh, do you think we're slipping through their fingers? Oh, big time. So big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, it's like a, the, 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 the space between their fingers are like, the, the, what's that, like the canyon? Um, <laughs> what's that called? Grand Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. They, they can't stop it. They really can't. And that's one of the things that really surprised even me this year was that even the people who are most asleep are becoming aware of things happening around them and also more empowered. They do have more power. And fortunately, because they're asleep, they throw it around and they hit you energetically speaking. But that's actually oh, it's kind of cool because they're more powerful, right? Right, right. But the awareness, definitely, definitely. Well, with that, um, with with that greater power comes greater responsibility, and precisely you know, with with yeah. all the 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 trials and tribulations that we we witness all our friends, family, and associates going through, especially this last year, it seemed like everybody was going through some sort of turmoil of of one kind or another. Yeah, and and it's. It's through those things where we start realizing uh, cause and effect, how how we are creating, uh, we start to see that there are signatures in the creation. Yes, definitely. And that, what you mentioned about our relatives, you know, that's the big one. Our friends and relatives are the big ones for 2014. And the team and I, the, the Ascension 101 team and I are, are presently talking about how we're going to, we're going to create a new website. And it's not going to have any of the words that put people off like Ascension, spirituality, meditation. It's not going to have any of that. It's going to be a website that says exactly the same thing, but in communicating in everyday language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that you and I can send this, the link to people that we know that will, you know, kind of, uh, would never look at a website that says ascension on it or meditation or spirituality, but would take a look at something that says, you know, improve your health or, you know, I don't know, <laughs> right. improve your sex life. I don't know what it's going to have yet, but it's going to have the language that empowers and wakes people up in their own language. Yeah. And when I have it, I'm going to send you the link so you guys can also tell people. Oh, absolutely. Because I think we have to work together. You know, it's, it's a, broad collaboration of reaching those individuals are exactly that because they are more empowered because really they have to start taking responsibility Hmm. yeah that is an excellent idea Anelia because you know from what I've seen happen in this field uh, since since I became you know more involved is that we're still all we, uh, the the field is growing, and these groups and these organizations and and all these these uh, the people that are uh, jumping on the bag wagon, wagon, so to say, that number continues to grow and it's growing very rapidly. But it's still just a tiny drop in the pail when we look out at the seven billion people on the planet. And Precisely, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Right, I, and we got to, we got to, and, and that's an excellent idea. Re- speaking their language, let's you know be yeah. subtle, right? Uh, yeah, I see this last three years for myself personally to have been a training ground because when I was asked to go public, and this is not something I usually say, it wasn't to reach a small group of people who are waking up. It was to reach billions on the planet. Now. I have no interest in, like, fame or anything like that. It's not about that. It's about for them to receive the message of empowerment. Billions. When we reach billions, even one billion, of the normal, regular, everyday person, and even if the message is really, really simple and something they can do very simply in their life, that's that's when we're going to see really massive, big shifts. Mm. There's a lot of individuals already doing that. I mean, what's that English guy that, I mean, there's loads of anti, um, is it Brent, Brandon or Brad? Yeah, Bre- Brendan, I think. Brandon. The, uh, the, uh, the comedian? Yeah, the comedian, yeah. That he was on, um, the big, uh, BBC, like, talk show. Yeah, that's right. I mean, with him, for example, he, it's not, he's not apologizing about himself. He, he uses all his, messed up life and all his mistakes towards 
delivering that message of empowerment. And at the same time, he's admittedly that he's, you know, he's a recovering addict and everything else. And he's come under a lot of attack. People saying he's actually Illuminati, he's controlling people, he's doing this and that and the other. But look at the result. Right. Look at the results. I say, don't look at the person or his past or what he's doing. Look at the result. And the result is that people are actually questioning all these things now. I mean, some people do complain, or he, he swears and he, he does sexual movements and all sorts of things. You know, he's, he's um, what's that word? <laughs> um, no, uh, you know, when somebody's being rude, whatever. Um, and that is true. Or um, vulgar. Yeah, vulgar, that's it, yeah. He's vulgar, I can't watch him. And that's fine, you know, but he's speaking the language of the masses. Right, right. And if he's saying, you know, it's like if he's saying, you don't have to give me authority to say this, I'm taking the authority, that gets to those people. Yeah. Even that I, tiny little thing. I, I think what's what's really important, you know, like in his case, is just, you know, as you're saying, he he's just expressing what he's feeling and what he's seeing. And then, you know, I love, uh, for example, like he he's a good example with, with that one. And there was this 14-year-old girl who was um, on a major, I think, what was the CNN, Tom? The 14-year-old girl talking about GMO? Yeah, I'm not sure what that was on. It was, anyway, one of these major networks. And... What both of those guys I kept seeing trying to do, and I saw that it wasn't working, was they kept trying to, you know, if you can't attack the facts, attack the character. Yes, kind of exactly. Thing. So they okay. kept doing that, and they just kept hitting them with facts and facts, and, you know, one after another hitting them with facts. <laughs> and I love it how they just ignore the facts and then continue to attack the character. Yeah, and then that people see that, you know. I mean, yeah. not everybody, but a lot of people start to see that. It starts even in, on an unconscious level. Hold on a minute. That an interviewer wasn't wasn't attacking what this person was saying. It was, they were attacking the person. Right. Yeah? And when the person doesn't respond to that attack and continues saying the facts, it's like that. You know, it's like, don't take it personally. Don't defend. Just say it. Yeah. 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 They don't yeah. get invited back on too many talk shows after that. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> oh, but but they get they get. I mean, they've made th those types of shows, uh, and Russell Brand's been a great one for this. Uh, is they're really bringing this stuff to mind for people? I mean, it's it's creating questions. Yeah, they're they're bringing it to the masses, and that that's what we need to do for this year coming up. What we need to think of ways and be ingenious on how do we reach the masses. What's surprising is how those people get invited in the first place. Yeah, that's fascinating, isn't it? You know, because really all they need is one time shot. They don't need to be on there every week. It's like you get one shot to to listen to all these different, um, you know, to listen to this opinion. And you're like, wait, he's making sense. And then that's enough for you to maybe one person start researching what he's talking about or even if the person says ah oh, no that's all bs let me let me i want to prove him wrong and they start researching and then they have that that aha moment well i find that when people want to research stuff they will find the proof they're looking for <laughs> yeah you know they'll always they'll always find excuses to be right there's very few individuals who have whom i've met who started with one very, very powerful righteous opinion and after researching, changed their mind. I have seen them and I've experienced them personally, but there's so few of them, very few. Right, right. Especially if they get up on the world stage and make a statement. Exactly. I mean, how many people get on that world stage, you know, even if it's something, that, especially something that's profitable for them, something that protects them in life, Right. And then turn around and say, oops, sorry about that, guys. I was wrong. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's like uh, getting the the uh, the military-industrial complex or the oil industry to stand up and say, uh, sorry, guys, but gas was the wrong idea. 
yeah, we shouldn't have uh, uh, disempowered and got rid of Telsa. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that happening any day soon. But, but you, there, there are, there are. That's something else that's really started to come to the surface more in the later half of this year is that there are people like that story Ramon mentioned at the beginning of the show about that little generator that that operates off of ambient static electric fields. Uh, it's just, really I mean, that kind that. of thing. Yeah, I haven't heard about that. But, yeah, it's free energy is something that I'm very interested in. And... Um, because we, I mean, yeah, it's like we are all, everything is energy, right? We are all just energy. Right. And the separation of that energy is, is an illusion. You know, somebody said that the energy contained in one human body can light up a city for a week or something. Mm. I think I heard somebody say no, maybe it was a day, but just imagine that energy and if we can tap into it. Exactly. exactly. And that's what he did, like what, what uh, Ramon was saying, if you put it onto the internet, for anybody to create and and make their own energy, and that's where we're going. You know, it's like that's part of who we are as a human species. Right. We put, we we share. We we want to make a really good environment, not just for ourselves, but for everybody. And the separation of that into, for example, a lot of people say, um, "Oh, you know, why do you charge for your courses and blah blah?" Well, you know, it's like. Three families are being fed from that work, and it allows us to work on that stuff full time. So why are you complaining? Do you want me to go and work at McDonald's most of the day, and then I have mm. two hours at night to work on this? That type of thing, right? It's like that. Do not um, like that separation of lack. Yeah, the separation of no, you're not allowed to, or you're not, mm, you're not worthy of receiving or having. And that's changing into an, another another energy that says, I honor you and you inspire me and I'm going to empower you in any way I can, whether it's with contact or with an interview or with buying your stuff so you can buy milk and bread. You know, it's like that empowerment is coming through. More and more, I see it, more and more individuals are responding so positively um, to that energy. Yeah, to the energy of allowing and um, how can I explain it? I suppose a few years ago, I used to do this work for many, many years, but it wasn't public. And somebody said, oh, you know, what happens if the planet, you know, the financial system and the roads and electricity all go down and then we're going to have to live in this type of society, blah, blah. Or maybe if you move into community, well, uh, the, that person was really good at, physical work and cooking and then I was looking at what I could do and think oh flipping neck you know I'm going to be community less and starving because I'm not I can't do any of that stuff all I can do is do this other thing you know give hmm. <laughs> of empowerment and inspire people so I'm going to start this and I thought oh well whatever you know that's fine if I was if we go fall into that world I probably won't want to live anyway so it doesn't really matter if I starve to death and I continued you know I didn't try to you know, kind of buy more food or try to learn survival skills. Hmm. Because I, it wasn't there. But that energy of true exchange without the competition or without that self, um, uh, egoic, uh, instant gratification that we've been taught so much. And I love, for example, the the movie The Secret. I love it because that also reached billions of people around the planet. It was a fabulous movie. But it was a little bit hijacked because the manifestation message, you can see it in the visuals, not necessarily on the words, but the visuals. You see diamond necklaces and fast cars right. and and houses. And that's what people started working for, started working to get their fabulous car or their perfect partner or their jewelry and all these things, right? But I can tell you that what I do with my money is to inspire and to empower others. That's what I do. So if we, if I have some sort of power, and money is power, yeah? You have money, you have power, you have ability to do. You have more ability to do more stuff with money than without. You can have a brilliant idea. But if you don't have the 
the power to do them or the ability to do them, then it's just going to be an idea. Right. You know? That's why you pull in financiers and other people. But it's like, okay, so I was looking at this equation and thinking, okay, so if I had a billion dollars, what would I do? Would I buy the car in the beautiful house? I might, you know, I might still fall into that, but not for long, because my interest would be still to reach billions of people uh, with the power, uh, with the message of empowerment. So most likely, I would invest those in a company and the individuals, talented individuals, who could create stuff that are consumables, like uh, advertisements, like toys, games, like uh, movies. Um, video games that had that message of empowerment in them with, without getting rid of the entertainment factor, right? Right, right. So, Speaking yeah, that that's, language, right? Exactly, speaking their language. And that's what I would do with those billions. So it's like, yeah, whatever. But it's like that message of empowerment and manifestation was delivered where people would think, okay, if I have a billion dollars, what I'm going to do is a private jet, private house, and that's perfectly fine. But you're going to have more, yeah? Yeah. You're going to have much more, so why not use it for the other? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. To empower people, to empower the planet, to empower your society, to clean up your local river even, you know, pay one of these cleanup companies to go up and clean up a river or a lake. <laughs> right. Right. I'm right with you with that, Amelia. Right there. Well, yeah. we, we've, we've burned up this first hour already. No way. That. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? Gosh. Well, I, the, I wanna... the, that hour went by as fast as this last year did. I know. <laughs> I wanted to ask uh, one last thing, Tom. Um, if you had to sum up this this year, 2013, and now people listening to this is 2014, but if you have to su sum up this in one, two, maybe three words. How would you sum up um, 2013? You are empowered. <laughs> That's what it be. Every single individual on the planet is becoming empowered. Is empowered. Mm. There you go, Ramon. All right, guys. Well, hey, we're gonna take a short break here, and when we come back, we're gonna we're gonna talk about. Uh, 2014 and what kind of things that we can do and what Anelia's got on the, the plate in front of her and uh, yeah, some more good conversation. We're going to let uh, who'd we say, it's the right time by the luminaries take us out. No, no, sorry Tom. Huh? Be the change. By oh, the be luminaries. the, okay, that's right. I knew <laughs> mixing <of> something. Song. <laughs> it's the right time isn't even by the luminaries. No. Oh my word. I have it all messed that's up. That's by Inner Soul. So it's the right time by who? No, Tom, let me say it. It's Be the Change. Oh, yeah. By the Luminaries. <laughs> oh, short term, short term memory loss. Oh, God. <laughs> we call that senile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're going to take a break and we'll be back after a few minutes and we'll get into <laughs> segment two. <laughs> Whatever. We'll, we'll hopefully make it back. Condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. The love you deny is the pain you carry. <laughs> and we'll see you in the memory the section. Change. We wish to see in the world. Freedom's calling, I feel the fire, the feet beside us. Everybody wants change, but tell me who will guide us. To the leaders that pass away, put up your lighters. It's a beautiful struggle, but it cannot divide us. We're the ones that we've always been waiting for. See yourself in the mirror and open up the door. Walk through it and feel the love to watch your pores. Be the light, life's purpose is to feel joy. Metaphysical, lyrical, standing up for truth. The only one to make change is walking in your shoes. Be the example, don't complain about the news. Making music and serving the world with the loo. Now you can be the same, or you can be the change. Thought straight from inside, break through the chains No one to blame, nothing to prove You create your reality, it's up to you Be the change That you wanna see in the world I got me live for peace Aspire to be So I'm gonna fight for the beliefs Like Martin Luther King Aspire to be Of that love, that light Like Christ, it's right For the moment of need And if you believe In Jehovah, Allah, Buddha Christians love to me My soul yearns for peace in a world that's bloody 
flooded with war. History's littered with body scar, trying to settle the score to maintain an archaic platform of power and greed. People fight for land out of survival and need. So I'm killing my television and I'm planting the seed. To fill my head with knowledge that I'm seeing a seed. Due to the media, propaganda, killing my creed. Or what don't kill me make me stronger, feeling straight when I bleed. Fighting for interest and forwards attached to feet. They try to sell you anything in this world, nothing for free. Land air, fire, and water, they keep up in the ante while the anti proletariat told the powers to be. But we keep fighting, surviving, and thriving, recycling, and rhyming. We constantly inclining, we see through the lying and prying. They tell you we keep trying to keep you from asking.